Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be talking about AppSheet. I'm joined with uh, Steph here, who is our head of development and our resident AppSheet uh, pro. We've prepared a list of 10 of our best tips for beginners, edging into maybe intermediate uh, users that we use on a daily basis. Now, treat these tips as rules, I would say. There's some tips in there that are practical, some of them are theoretical, but stick with us till at least tip number nine, which honestly, we feel like it's been one of the most underutilized features of AppSheet, and it's been a true game changer for our clients and the projects that we do. So tip number one that we can give to any AppSheet beginner is that you need to forget the AppSheet myth that you can turn any spreadsheet into an app. Although that's somewhat true, AppSheet needs a well thought, planned out database. If we take a look at this example here, we've got a spreadsheet that is really nice, but it has multiple headers and it's not structured as a relational database. And that simply cannot work with AppSheet. Tip number two, one business, one spreadsheet. Especially if you're starting now, this is one of the most important pieces of advice that we can give you. You need to bring all your data into one spreadsheet. So let's take a look at this example. We have one spreadsheet, but with multiple tabs where we can see our projects, items, suppliers. And the important thing is that we don't have to run around searching on different tabs on our browser to find our data. We need to establish control at the very beginning. Tip number three, you can use AI as your database architect slash coach. So we've talked about some fundamental concepts so far, but let's get down to more practical stuff. You're just about starting to create your database, but you don't know where to start from. You can use AI to build that design for you. But let's take a look at this simple prompt. We can see that AI is now giving us the core tables that we need to use. And furthermore, it also gives us the fields that we need into each table with their relationships. This is invaluable, especially if you're starting out and you don't need an expert to build the design for you. Tip number four, use the sandwich method with setting up a new table. The reason why we call this a sandwich method is because we have a left part, a right part, and a middle part. And let's take a look at that in more detail. On the left-hand side, we have our unique ID, otherwise called our primary key, by which we can identify each record uniquely. On the right-hand side, we have our tracking columns where we, where we can track activity across records because AppSheet doesn't do that for you. In the middle part, we have our biographical information or relationships to other tables. Bottom line is that you need to have a consistent method of setting up your tables. Tip number five, start small, be in control. Now your data might be living across multiple spreadsheets, Excel files, and you need to consolidate them into a single app sheet app. Start with one spreadsheet, and I will even take it one step further. Start with a few records. Let's take a look at this example. We're building out a warehouse management system. There's so many things to consider here. We've got our items, we've got suppliers, locations. Let's focus on items first. Our initial item spreadsheet contained thousands of items, but we just imported three records to get us going. I'm sure you agree that managing three records at the beginning is so much easier than managing 3,000 records. Tip number six, consistency beats talent. So now that we've got some basic data in our database, let's just have a look at what are the basic uh, principles of adding a table within our AppSheet app. So let's just have a look. I'm gonna go back into my AppSheet app and I'm gonna hit data and then I'm gonna go to tables. I'm gonna to click to add a new table and then I'm gonna select my data source. After selecting my data source, I'm able to select which tables I want to add in. Right now, I just wanna add the projects table. So I'm gonna click add one table, wait for AppSheet to do its magic. And now that we've got our table in, let's just have a look uh, at our projects table. So we can click on the projects and it will open up this new view here for us. I'm gonna click view columns. Now what we're gonna do, is we're gonna normalize the columns within AppSheet. What do we mean by normalize it? Make it understandable for AppSheet. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide this project UID because we don't really need it visible within the app. So I'm gonna uh, hit the uh, checkbox here under show. And then I'm just, just gonna make sure that also my tracking columns down here are not also visible within the app. No need for those to be visible. What I'm gonna do with, with these tracking columns, I wanna make sure that they update correctly when they need to. So I'm gonna use the app formula and the initial value to add some basic uh, functions uh, of AppSheet. So for the last edit by, I'm just gonna click on formula and put in here the expression called user email. And this is gonna print the uh, user email of the user who actually last edited this record. I'm gonna do the, a very similar thing with the last edit date, where I'm gonna use this ex the expression called UTC now, that prints the timestamp of uh, the current moment that this record has been updated. Now for the last two, created by and created date, I'm gonna use the initial value because I only want it to update only once when we actually create the record. So I'm gonna hit the initial value of the created by, 
Use again the same user email expression. And lastly, use the UTC now for the uh, created date. You can already see that AppSheet added the now for us, but it's always better to use UTC now, especially if you're working with people who are not in the same time zone with you. One thing that we also need to mention is that the primary key needs to also have a unique ID uh, function right here under the initial value. So we make sure that AppSheet always gives it a unique value so we can distinguish our records. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to set up the types of each columns. You can already see that AppSheet has decided some of these types for us, but we can also change it to, to what we like. So project ID, I'll, I will keep it as a text, project name, keep it as a name. But here we've got a staff UID, which is a link to a different table. So here we're gonna use the type called Called ref, which means referencing another table. Immediately, AppSheet is going to tell us select the source table and I'm going to choose the staff table. So, this is going to basically give us the list of the staff people who live in our staff table. Now, the staff UID, it's also not a great name to be visible within the app. So, I'm going to scroll all the way to the right where we can see the display name and I'm just going to rename this to something more understandable. Now, one last thing that we need to do here is we've got a status column that we need to have a few different options, like a single select option. So instead of text, I'm going to hit and select the option called enum that stands for enumerated. Then I'm going to hit this pencil here so we can go a, a further deep into the editing of that column. And I'm just going to add a couple of values. So I'm going to select here and I'm going to put draft and maybe live. It's always nice to have a consistency on how you normalize your app sheet tables. I generally start with hiding columns that we don't really need visible within the app. Then I add my initial values to my tracking columns and my primary key. And then I fix my column types. And then lastly, I make sure that my columns have a very distinct and understandable display name. Tip number seven, learning the app sheet syntax. App sheet is a very powerful tool and its power lies mainly uh, within its syntax. But if you're just starting out and you're wondering how am I ever going to learn all of these expressions, Expressions. Let me just give you three of the most important expressions that we use in a day-to-day -day basis. So first up, we start with concatenate, which gives us the ability to tie multiple pieces of uh, data into a single string. Very useful to learn uh, when you're just starting out. Next up, we have the if expression. If evaluates an argument and gives us the ability to provide an output whether this argument is true or false. Really good to use when you're dealing with logical problems within your app. Next up, we have the select expression. Slightly more advanced expression, but it helps us retrieve a list of values from any table based on certain conditions. For more information, check out AppSheet's documentation. Tip number eight, understanding the slice. So now we're going into a slightly more advanced territory. The next thing that you need to explore is slices. Slices is AppSheet's way of helping us pre-filter our data so we can use it in our views. So let's take a look at this example. I have a view which is called all projects and I can see all my projects in a single view. Now there might be a need for someone to be able to very quickly jump into a view and see all my active projects. So the way to do this is to create a new view called active projects, but prefilled our data uh, using a slice. So let's see how I've built that. So if you click here on your data, you should be able to see up here a tab called slices. By clicking on the slice, you can create a new slice where you select your source table and then put in an expression. And here I've used my status equals active to filter this data. Then lastly, when I created my active uh, projects, I've selected for this data to use the active projects slice that provides me with the ability to filter this view. Tip number nine, reporting, the free AppSheet superpower. AppSheet provides us with the ability to generate reports using the data that we have within our app. All other uh, no-code solutions, they generally require a third-party solution to generate reports, whether they are Excel, CSVs, or PDFs. AppSheet has this all baked in within the system. It's free. It uses a slightly different syntax, but it's based upon the basic uh, syntax that you currently use within AppSheet. So it's definitely worth to explore if you, if you want to take things to the next level. Finally, tip number 10, use AppSheet's API. You can pretty much use AppSheet API to control every aspect of your app. You can even create, update records, trigger automations, or even generate reports. Lately, we even utilized AppSheet's API to trigger a PDF report for a client on a non-AppSheet project. So if you want to continue on mastering AppSheet, definitely check out AppSheet API.